Hello one and all, this is So Hellkite and welcome to my first guide for Black Desert Online. In this guide I'll be covering the worker basis and how to set them up and create your working empire. Let's get on with it. The first thing I want to do is think about what you want your workers to actually do. There is gathering and then there's crafting and there's so much you can do with this part. For instance, for the gathering side, you can cut trees to get lumber, you can mine ore, you can harvest herbs, you can pick crops, you can excavate in certain nodes, and you can harvest meat. For the second part, there's crafting, and you can turn all your gathering bits into good resources. For instance, you can set up a workshop and create trade packs, you can set up a mineral workshop to create ingots, horse armor, ship parts, wagon parts, tool workshop, weapons, armor, the list goes on. It's a good idea to get this in your head and think about what you want to start before you get into get hiring your first worker. Once you've figured out what you want your workers to do, either gathering or crafting, now's the time to spend some of that contribution points. Let's start off with gathering. With gathering, you have to invest your contribution points into a node. The way you can do this, you have to go to the node itself. You cannot go on the world map and purchase it there. You have to physically walk up to the node manager, talk to him, go to node management, and contribute the point towards the node manager. Bear in mind, when you contribute the point to the manager, you have to also get the plot of land as well. Otherwise, your worker's not gonna know where to work. And the most important thing is, the node you wish to work from needs to be connected in the town or city where you hired your worker. Otherwise, your worker will not go there. How you can tell if they're linked? If they're linked, you should see a gold line connecting from the town or city to the node you are on. If it's not connected, you'll see a white line. That's the difference. You have got to set up your contribution points and set up a network so your worker can get there. Now for the crafting side of things. For this one, you don't need to go for any node management. All you need to do is click on any town or city you wish to buy a building from. And then the option's all there for you to choose from. Now this is very important for the crafting side of things. It's very similar linking up the node to cities or towns. You need to be able to link up buildings to other buildings to get better workshops. For instance, the blue houses you can see on the map are the base. They're like the first standard ones you get. They're either your house you can purchase for yourself, lodging, which I'll get into later, storage, and other basic workshops. But as you can see, there's a white line connecting some houses. You need to be able to purchase all of these to get the better workshops. For instance, if you connect all of them, it will cost you three to five contribution points. But this is where you get the better stuff like level one, level two, and level three workshops. I have seen level four, they're for like storage and horse ranching. But the workshop is where you want to look at. This is where you can start getting the better horse armor, the better tools, and the better items you can make either for personal gain or for profit. It is completely up to you. Once you have an understanding and what you actually want to do for your worker, gathering, crafting or both, now it's time to hire your first worker. In every town and every city there is a contact worker you can go up to. You will need energy and a bit of pocket money to hire your workers. They are found on the map by the pickaxe symbol. Right click, get set a path and go over to there. Once you've found your work supervisor, talk to him and there'll be an option saying contact workers. This is where you can bring up the resume for your worker, it will cost you 5 energy. If you're not happy of that worker's stats and skills, you can spend a further 5 energy to bring up another worker. This is where the game has a bit of a gamble so you can actually get better workers and profession names. For instance, there's 5 you can hire from, grey being the worst, green, blue, yellow, and orange being the best. I've never seen an orange before, but this is where they did determine the different stats. There are four different stats that define a worker or race of that worker. For instance, work speed. Depending if you put them on a crafting node or a gathering node, that's how fast they'll be able to make something or bring their stuff back to you. Movement speed is moving to and from their town to the workplace you want to have them. Luck determines the rare loot you get. For instance, if you mine ore, you can make you maybe get some rare powder like powder of darkness, tree saps, and that powder called trace of servitude or hunting. And stamina. Stamina's very, very, very important for workers. And I'll get into that later how to replenish it. If they run out of stamina, they will not work. Now you can hire up to three races as well. Starting from smallest to biggest, you can hire a goblin. Goblins have the best work speed, the best move speed, the 
okay luck but have the worst stamina. Humans are very average. Humans have average work speed, average movement speed, very very good luck and okay stamina. And then you have the giants. Low work speed, low movement speed, low luck but very good stamina. Bear in mind as well, once you hire your first worker, talking about the lodging as I mentioned previously, one, lo one worker will won't cost you any lodging, but if you want to hire more workers, this is when you got to start purchasing buildings so they can actually have somewhere to stay. Now the most important thing for a worker is their stamina like I mentioned. When they run out of stamina, they will not work for you. So anything except from crafting, gathering or anything, they will not lift a finger if you give them some proper food. And that food is beer. You can either purchase beer yourself in the marketplace, what players have made, or you can make it yourself, which is a lot easier in my opinion. The three main things you'll need to make a beer is corn, wheat and potatoes. I find potatoes the easiest. All the way up in Vela, there are tons and tons of potato farms over there. Get a hoe and start hoeing them potatoes. And then the ingredients you need afterwards will be mineral water, leave-in agents and raw sugar. And you'll need a cooking utensil as well to actually cook the beer. If you are struggling to get the resources needed to make beer, it's very simple to get them. You go to any pub with a cook there or a vendor and they will sell you the things needed as well. To make a beer, you need to be able to purchase a house for yourself. That's in any town, purchase one. You plop it in and you start making one. The ingredient needed to make beer is one sugar, two leaving agents, six mineral water, and either the things you've got, five potato, five corn, or five wheat. It's up to you. And it can make a batch from anything from one to three beer per batch. Get your cooking level up, you can get more beer. And how you recover your workers, you simply go to the workers tab, hit recover all, and simply hit confirm. And any beer you have in your inventory, you'll shove down the worker's neck and can continue working. The last thing I'm gonna go across is worker skills. When you first purchase your first worker, he'll have one skill unlocked. Every five levels after that, he'll start leveling up and getting different skills, making him work in better situations. For instance, you'll have a worker that works better than a node. You have some workers that work best in crafting, or you have some workers that work a better craft at making furniture, or tools, or working in certain nodes. And if your worker gets to level 10, you can actually promote your worker. What I mean by promotion is, for instance, my skilled human worker can go to a professional worker. How does this work? There'll be a little tab on the right hand side on the worker list saying promo. Once you click it, the following notice will appear. The promotion test will be held for a day. During the test, other workers cannot take the test. If passed, the level, skill and stat will be reset. Meaning they'll, they'll go up, but they'll start back at level 1, but they'll be a professional worker but there is a high chance they can fail. I've had, I've had many attempts at promoting my workers and they've never promoted themselves. So it's completely up to you if you wanna do that. This has been my worker's guide for Black Desert Online. Of course, if I have missed anything else, please comment in the section below. I do appreciate any sort of feedback because this is my first Black Desert guide. Thank you so much for watching guys. Take care of yourself guys and have an awesome day. Bye bye. Oh, oh my, my God, goodness. I forgot how big they are. Hey, buddy! Whoa, I... Oh. Oh, shit! Oh! <laughs> I couldn't press that yet. <laughs> I hate Wait, are you just doing this? Hold that? No, I'm not. See? Me and Grant left. Yeah, this is the typical one. The two of us. Did Nova already die? Nova died yeah, instantly. I got lightning. I got lightning. Turn <gasps> No! <Yes! laughs> I win! Just win. Oh, Wait, now I... He's... I died. Did you get any well done? I got one. Oh no, because yes! I got red! I got a red! Yes! I did it! Yes! The <laughs> <Me> king! <laughs> yeah! I now place it under my cranium! Let the oil 